guess in a Swan, a German politician, a candidate uh, to the German presidency, she has a proposal for the European Commission, a very interesting one. She says that we should uh, create a fund to manage the arrival of refugees, that central governments are avoiding that arrival. So we're going to talk to them about what the proposal is all about. Then we, the floor will be uh, to the participants of the European Commons Assembly with uh, an interview about uh, the issues they've been dealing with uh, during these uh, last three days in contemporary at the same time at this meeting, then a conversation between Miguel Urban, uh, Europe EP uh, from Podemos, and Lorenzo Marsili, uh, coordinator of European Alternatives, will discuss about possible solutions to this rise of nationalism and the identity crisis, uh, both in Spain and uh, in Europe. For us, it's very important to open our perspective and look at what's going on in our niche, in our realities, to exchange experiences. That's uh, what uh, TransEuropa is for. To present you the first two people coming on stage, also to mention that um, this is, a, this, this is the political cultural forum of uh, Trans Europa, which is done in partnership with uh, the Kiev Biennale that is taking place already now, and uh, that we will also going to participate in Kiev under the title The New International. So I invite you to also have a look at that program. We have, um, we have that program outside here at, at, this, at the desk. I also invite you to take a look at, at another partner of ours tonight, which is... Um, the editors of a book that um, has, has a, in some sense a similar goal to us because they have made a transnational project out of that book which is called The Great Regression. We have that book here tonight both in English and in Spanish so we invite you to take a look. It's here for sale and uh, the editors of the German version um, col are collaborating with us and uh, the first panel is in partnership uh, in order to also have you present um, two authors that are taking part in that book. And um, now I want to invite on stage Katrin Hook and Oliver Ressler. Oliver Ressler is uh, a participant of the, of the panel, of the so-called artist panel that, um, that we are having. Unfortunately, he has to leave slightly earlier, so at least to give him a chance to say a few words. Um, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to have you here and, um, and invite you on stage um, at least to share um, parts of your work. There's uh, behind me an exhibition that I think by now you all know and two video works from Oliver Ressler are on display here. Katrin Hug comes from Zurich in Switzerland and uh, she's the curator of the Kunsthaus Zurich and um, thank you both for coming and for being here and um, I'll now pass on to you to have a few minutes conversation. Thank you. Okay. Hello, everybody. Do we sit down? Yes, we sit down. So we have a few minutes to talk. And uh, uh, so thank you for the invitation and uh, for being here. I'm very excited about this um, to exchange totes with you and share totes now, especially with Oliver Ressler. I would like to ask very concrete questions to you since this is the opportunity to find out about technical and contextual details. So there are two films you are showing in this uh, very interesting exhibition here. Um, they were produced pretty much in the same time, in 2015 and 16, but look uh, from the appearance are very very different and maybe you could tell us a little bit why you choose for a pretty let's say similar uh, impetus the um, the so-called migration crisis or migration um, discourse why did you choose these two very different formal languages um, yeah, I'm, I've been focusing 
quite a bit in my artistic practice on borders, migration, uh, refugees, uh, and uh, when there was the so-called summer of migration in uh, 2015, when this uh, Schengen system uh, yeah, seemed to be uh, not functioning anymore for a couple of weeks, uh, yeah, I was very uh, impressed and uh, also very happy to see that uh, self-empowered uh, refugees uh, managed to enter the European uh, uh, Union. And, uh, but very strong images got created, I think, just through uh, the refugees walking on the highways and uh, very strong, powerful messages. But I had the impression that uh, the same day these messages, uh, uh, this, or, sorry, these images were created, these images of self-empowerment, they already got discredited by how uh, media used them, very often with the intention to, um, yeah, to make this flow of movement uh, cease to exist. And uh, so I got interested in working on, the f on this theme, but <clears throat> I, I felt that I could not use these images anymore. Uh, that I, for myself, need kind of a moratorium of, of these kind of images. And decided to create a different category of imagery, of visualization. Uh, and so I, I decided on a text which uh, was on the function of uh, this border system or the function also into uh, developing different categories of people who are allowed to cross or who are not allowed to cross, uh, which also enables nation states in order to create certain uh, categories of, uh, of, of people who, are, who can be exploited also in a very extreme manner. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a text on open borders as well and about uh, the failure of the system of open borders as we know nowadays as, as it's so uh, simple that open borders can be closed again and about, uh, I try to open a space to imagine kind of a borderless world of a post-national reality. So uh, there you allude especially to the film Emergency Turned Upside Down, right? So maybe you could uh, explain a little bit uh, what you mean by emergency uh, upside down, what exactly you want to allude to, because this is exactly in the whole uh, discussion also of the media, how actually positively connoted imagery certainly became instrumentalized by the, the yeah, things like that. So it's also echoing in the title. Maybe you right. could say something about that? Yeah, the, the title Emergency Turned Upside Down uh, is related to the usage of the term emergency just in hegemonic uh, media where they saw an emergency in the situation that uh, the richest uh, nation states in the European Union now had to uh, cover basic needs uh, for uh, a couple of hundred thousand uh, refugees, which in reality is no emergency at all. I mean, uh, it just uh, requires a certain amount of organizing and, uh, and some money. And this uh, makes invisible the real emergencies that happen uh, nowadays uh, in wars uh, uh, and uh, 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 so the idea was to, uh, yeah, to, to focus on, on the real zones of emergency. So this uh, was especially about the animation film we were speaking first now and I would like also to speak with you about the research you did in Istanbul for several months 
Um, you were you did speak with um, more uh, more than ten people, uh, interviewed people from different professions, and uh, I would be very the audience would be very interested to hear more about the process, how you approached these people, what motivated you to go to Istanbul, in in contrast to maybe Greece or uh, an other or Italy, and uh, yeah. Um, I wanted to start with a quote from the film, which comes approximately um, in the second half, 20 minutes. It's a quite a long film, 30 minutes. For art film, it's, it's pretty long. And um, uh, long, it's, a <laughs> it's not a critique. Uh, and where um, an interviewee says, if the attempted coup had succeeded, our lives would have become a living hell. Maybe, so these are many questions I put in one. Um, yeah, I think in, in general, it would be possible to do s such a film in many different countries. Uh, Greece uh, de is definitely one among those. And yeah, and sometimes also why I decide to work on a specific country also uh, is related to uh, certain invitations. So in this case, I got an invitation to do a solo exhibition at the Salt Galata and it came with a production budget and the invitation also to produce a new piece for a survey exhibition. And uh, yeah, I was um, researching um, a couple of different uh, fields of my interest and finally decided on the fact that the largest group of Syrian uh, refugees is actually based uh, in Turkey. And the title, There are no Syrian refugees in Turkey, comes uh, from the fact that uh, these uh, refugees have no possibility to apply for asylum in Turkey. So they are accepted to stay there, to work there, to make their living usually uh, in the informal market, uh, but there's no um, procedure to apply for asylum for, uh, for them. And um, <clears throat> yeah, when uh, when I finally uh, went to Istanbul to produce the film, there was this coincidence that, uh, that I think my trip started two days after this attempted coup d'etat on uh, 15 July 2016, which brought a different uh, or an additional level uh, uh, of interest uh, towards the film. So, this was nothing that was uh, originally there as a, as a theme, of course, because it was completely unexpected. So, um, um, a central decision, a formal decision for this film was not to show uh, the refugees, which is, I usually, uh, I'm very much into showing refugees, not only providing platforms from where to speak, but also visually uh, showing them. But in this case, it was simply not possible because what I um, um, wanted to achieve with this film was to create kind of a platform where uh, refugees would not only talk about their personal experiences and their difficulties to make a living in a, a huge city like Istanbul, but mm -hmm. also to uh, give kind of um, politic analysis and to make a politic argumentation. So they knew that they would not be shown. So in order that, so they would speak more freely in a way, then. Yeah, I, I told them from the very beginning that I would only uh, do audio recordings, so I not even had a camera with me when, mm -hmm. when I did these recordings, which I think makes uh, the entire conversation also a bit more relaxing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I usually only knew the first name and not the second name, so they knew that they would really speak from a kind of an anonymity. Uh, and that even when I wanted to, uh, to, uh, to s say their real name, I, I did not know in most of the cases their real names. And uh, so, uh, in order to raise this quite clear critique, this clear analysis, uh, I think this was a very helpful uh, decision in order to uh, yeah, 
get this kind of arguments I hoped I would kind of get through their perspectives, through their voices. And maybe uh, if you could comment to us a little bit more in detail how you experienced actually the fact that since Syrian refugees actually are not refugees uh, from the st their social status, uh, the ambivalence they have uh, towards the current political, let's say, um, yeah, let's say, uh, on part on partial uh, changes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the Syrian refugees are considered to be guests in, in Turkey, uh, and uh, this entitles them, for example, uh, in usually that the kids can go to school uh, if they are able to follow uh, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Turkish. Uh, or also uh, free treatment uh, in hospitals. So there is some commitment, also financial commitment from the Turkish government towards refugees, and it's three million refugees, so it's, it's really a lot. Uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's just not this procedure to uh, apply uh, for a refugee. And, of course, all these, um, these possibilities also for the Syrian refugees to enter Turkey uh, were part of, uh, of a political program of the AKP, of uh, President Erdogan, uh, where he, I think there are a variety of different intentions uh, with it. But, of course, he uses these refugees also uh, in some way also uh, as an argument uh, with the European Union in order to, uh, to get better negotiations, uh, whatever. And um, so when there was this coup d'etat in the mid of July 2016, uh, the refugees, of course, were also afraid to a certain extent that when there would be a new government, usually uh, things change a lot. And, uh, and they were just afraid that their status uh, would cease to exist, mm -hmm. that they would uh, be uh, yeah, evicted and would have to leave uh, Turkey, especially since uh, something like this already happened a couple of years before uh, when uh, um, hundreds of thousands of Syrian refugees were in Egypt and then Morsi uh, got, uh, yeah, uh, uh, there was the coup when that, that Morsi, the president, was not president anymore afterwards and, uh, and, and afterwards also a lot of these refugees had, had to leave. So it's often very linked to just uh, a certain president or ruler of a of a country. Okay, so um, I thank you very much for this very personal and um, precise insights in your work and we look already very much forward to see more soon. For example, at the Kiev Biennial there is uh, works to see uh, by Oliver Ressler, so Kiev Biennial, Biennial will also be a subject matter, matter later on this afternoon on this stage. Thank you very much, Oliver. Thank you. Thank you very much.